Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. I want to do a quick study, Obedience Unto Death. It's a beautiful day today, so there's a lot of animals out and about and making noise and whatnot. I'm a King James Bible believer. Make sure you have your King James Bibles out and following along. It's, just, it's five pages. I don't want it to be so long, so I'm just going to shoot through these real quick. Pause the video and turn to the scriptures. That's what I do when I watch other people's studies. Um, it's a great habit to get into. So, we're talking about being obedient unto death, but the first question I'm going to ask is, what is the greatest love? Okay. Is it dying for somebody, or is it living for someone? Okay. If you want to turn to John 15, 12, that's where we're going to start this study, and it's where we're going to end this study. Okay. John 15, 12, this is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you, past tense. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends, if ye do, ye do whatsoever I command you. Okay. People will look at this verse and say that it tends to only have to do with the physical death. And there's that application there, but there's something that people don't seem to understand. This is pre-crucifixion, I understand that. But for us today, I'm going to talk about, it's still talking about what the greatest love is, okay? What Jesus did for us, right? Um, so Romans 8.36, we read in Romans 8.36 for today, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. So we see as being a Christian that there's going to be times where people are going to be physically killed for Jesus Christ, Okay? Uh, Mark 8.35, For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels, the same shall save it. Okay? We look in history and we see that people, uh, the Catholic Church has killed millions and millions of Christians down through the centuries. Uh, one of the biggest things was the Word of God. They didn't want man, the average common man, to have God's Word. So they can, you know, like I told you, to have your Bible out and follow along to make sure I'm quoting from the King James Bible, God's perfect written word, that I'm telling you the truth, I'm not lying to you. You can hold me accountable because you have the same standard I do. Okay? In the past, you had religions, mainly the Catholic Church, didn't want God's word in the common person's hand. So that's one of the reasons people were dying for Jesus Christ. They had God's word and they held to it. Okay? Another thing that they were dying for Jesus Christ in the past was the Eucharist. They wouldn't have anything to do with the Eucharist of the Catholic Church. It's paganism, and it is. Um, what else? Uh, it's called transubstantiation, if I can say it right. But um, indulgences, you know, that uh, the traditions of men are held above the Word of God. But you look down through the centuries, and Christians have been dying. I mean, I, I remember correctly... Uh, other than John, it makes me think when, I didn't have this in my notes, but if you read and look in the, in the Gospels, um, Jesus asked, one of them says, I'd like to sit on your right hand or your left hand. L let me sit on your right and left hand. And Jesus is saying, uh, can you drink from the cup that I'm going to drink from? And he says, you, yes, you will. But to sit on my right hand or left hand is not for me, but for my father to decide. But the whole point of that, that I look at that and see that the, uh, the apostles were to die a martyr's death. And you look through a lot of the apostles, it doesn't say a lot of them, but the ones that are mentioned, the only person that didn't say that physically died um, was uh, John. Okay. So just going back to people dying, for, there was people dying for Jesus Christ. Well, Paul, Saul first was killing Christians, later became Paul. So Christians were dying from day one. Okay? So we read this, because I'm kind of going off a little bit to the left, but we read this and people look at it and say, well, you know, it's talking about death, being really willing to die for Jesus Christ. Okay? Okay? Now, one thing we're going to talk about is obedience unto death before salvation and after salvation. But first, we're going to go back to Jesus Christ, because I'm getting ahead of myself, we're going to go back to Jesus Christ as the example. Okay. Turn to Luke 22, starting at verse 39. We're going to read about Jesus in the garden when he's praying. Okay. 
And he came out and went, as he was wont, to the Mount of Olives. And his disciples also followed him. And when he was at the place, he said unto them, Pray that ye enter not into temptation. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast, and kneeled down and prayed, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, and strengthened him. And being in an agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was as it were great drops of blood falling down to the ground. Why is this important for what we're talking about, okay? He was saying that I, it, this death, is this the only way? Okay. I understand that that, voice is uh, that verse is showing us that the death on the cross was the only way. Jesus was obedient unto it. You want to know why? If you turn to Philippians 2.8. Right. And being found and fashioned as a man, he humbled himself. What we saw in the garden, he was on his knees praying. Right. And became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. There's two deaths there. He was obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Jesus knew he was going to die. He was obedient all the way up to his death on the cross. That's the important thing for this study. Two parts of obedience. There's going to be obedience before salvation, and there's going to be obedience unto death before salvation, and obedience unto death after salvation. Okay? And people don't seem to get this. Okay? Um, that's why it says, notice it said, even to the death of the cross, not just death, but in life, he lit, was obedience to God unto death, the death on the cross. Yes, he is God. But for us, okay, he's setting the example. Now, the question to ask again is, have you died for Jesus Christ? You say, what does that mean? Everybody's saying that I'll die for Jesus Christ. I'm willing to die for Jesus Christ. I'm asking all the false converts out there, have you actually died for Jesus Christ? Let that sink in for a little bit. We're going to get into it. Right? Us as Bible-believing, God-fearing men and women, when we get through this study, you're going to be like, oh, I get that. Okay, because I'm asking you too, have you died for Jesus Christ? Has, have I died, past tense, for Jesus Christ? Okay. And the other question to ask is, are you willing to be obedient to Jesus Christ all the way up to death or the catching away of the body of Christ? We're getting to the end. Catching away of the body of Christ might happen. Jesus sat there and he was praying. He was obedient unto death because he's saying if this cup, he had to die some way. Atonement had to be made. He was obedient un up to, to death, even the death of the cross. Okay. Um, so let's start about the first question. Did you, did you die for Jesus Christ? And we're going to be talking about the old man. Some of you guys might know, brothers and sisters of Christ, where I'm going with this. We're going to talk about the old man. Did you die for Jesus Christ? Romans 10, 16. <clears throat> Remember what we read over there in John 5, 12 about you are my friends, if you do whatsoever I command you. The first command that God gives the world is sal the, the gospel, mm -hmm. repentance. Okay. Romans 10, 16. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For I, Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? Mm -hmm. There's people who not obey. In order to obey something, you have to be given a command. Mm -hmm. It's important. 2 Thessalonians 1, 8. And flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not God, that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. There we get it again. People are not obeying the gospel. And what is it of our Lord Jesus Christ? First uh, Peter chapter 4, verse 17. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end of them that obey not the gospel of God? You know, we are commanded to obey the gospel. Okay. You can't obey something if you weren't commanded or told what that was that you're supposed to do. You're to do this, and then when you do it, you're obeying. Okay. Now, remember Jesus being obedient unto death. We're talking about the old man. 
We have the true gospel today, and the true gospel today is repentance. I mean, we've always had it since the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, but the true gospel of Jesus Christ comes to you in the King James Bible. Okay? These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. You can't believe in the true gospel if you don't have it. We have the true gospel. You can't believe in Jesus Christ if you don't know who Jesus Christ is according to Scripture. Okay? And a lot of studies I've done, if you followed along in this ministry, we talk about the lost world loves a Jesus Christ, and we believe in the Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So, true gospel is repentance towards God and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. I have a gospel message on this channel. You can go look at it. Um, just going over the gospel briefly because we're talking about obedience to death before and after salvation. Okay, Repentance towards God, faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Confess both in prayer. That's the obedience unto death. Okay? The old man dies at that point. Okay? Then you ask God to save you. And when God saves you, he revives you. Okay, He gives you new life. Okay, that's what the born again is talking about. Second right. Peter three nine, the Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering towards usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. It's a command of God. He's not wanting us to perish. He made a way for us to go to heaven, and He's commanding it every man everywhere to repent. Okay. Now, John 3.3, 3, I mentioned born again. Okay, He gives us a new life. The old man is dead and we're born again. Where do we get this? John 3.3, 3, first time it's mentioned. Okay. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? It's about the flesh. That's why he can't get it. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Okay. Nicodemus couldn't get it because it was about the flesh. Today, a lot of professing Christians out there, brothers, sisters of Christ, they can't get it. Why? Because it means the old man has to die first. Okay. It's a spiritually being born again. They can't get it. And what we see in the lost world, Brother and Sister Christ, the lost professing Christian world is, is they're being told that you can be a Christian as the old man. The old man doesn't have to die. You don't have to be obedient unto death before salvation. The old man doesn't have to die. You can keep the old man and be a Christian. And that's why we have so many false converts out there. And what's more appealing to people? You can keep your, you can, your flesh can, jumping ahead, your flesh can still be in charge and you can live however you want. The old man can still stay in charge. And you can be a Christian or the old man has to die and Jesus has to be your master, Lord and Savior, true master, Lord and Savior. And he's in charge, not your flesh. Romans 6, 5. I'm going to turn to Romans 6, 5. Okay. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, the old man, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection, born again, the new man. Okay. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth, henceforth we should not serve sin. And that just goes back to what I was saying, kind of jumping the gun a little bit, okay? Why do people not get the born again? Because they want to serve sin. They love the old man. A lot of birds out there. They love the old man. They love their sin, okay? They do not want to be obedient unto death. They don't want to obey the gospel, and the old man dies. And to die for Jesus Christ, to truly die for Jesus Christ. You cannot live for Jesus Christ, talked about it, born again, until you die for him. People do not want to die for Jesus Christ. That's what we already just talked about. They don't want to die for Jesus Christ. They love the old man. 
They want to keep the old man. Okay. Philippians 3.17 Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk so as we have us for an example. When we talk about false converts. For many walk of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, who end, whose end is destruction, hell, whose God is their belly, the old man, just think of this as the old man, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. Okay, They've chosen the flesh over God. We talked about this, being carnally minded and walking after the flesh. You go from being in the flesh to being in Christ Jesus. Okay. That's what's going on here. People claim, I'm willing to die for Jesus Christ, but I'm asking you to wake you up. Ha have you already died for Jesus Christ? Okay. Matthew chapter 10, 34. We're going to be turning to Matthew chapter 10, 24. 10, 34, excuse me. Think not that I've come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. A lot of us know this verse. For I've come to set a man at variance against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a man's foe shall be they of his own household. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. It's very important. Okay? And here's where we're going to get to what we're talking about. I just wanted to read it all together to understand. And he that taketh not his cross and follow after me. What's the whole, the whole thing about taking up your cross daily? We're going to get to that verse. Uh, the old man is dead and buried. And we're supposed to keep that man down. That's why we pick up our cross daily. Is not worthy of me. How many times do you get people that say, oh, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian, and you talk to them about the true gospel, the old man's supposed to die, and they're supposed to be born again, a new life, new creature in Christ Jesus, and they're not. They still have that old man, and that old man is striving, he's alive, he's not dead, and they don't care, they want that old man. They don't want the changed life. They're not worthy of Jesus Christ. Okay. 39. He that findeth his life shall lose it. You know, keeping the old man. i got to save that old man. I can't let that old man die. I can't do that. And he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. How do you lose a life and find it? Okay, you lose your old life. The old man is dead and buried. And you'll find a new life. And that new life is in what? Christ Jesus our Lord. That's so important to understand. When you're doing this study and you're looking at these verses, you're like, I get it more. You might not get all this when you're newly saved, but as you go on with your life with Christ and He starts opening the Word to you and you have a changed life, you start understanding this more and more, that this is more true in your life as a Christian as every day goes by. Uh -huh. Mark chapter 2, verse 21. Turn to Mark chapter 2, verse 21. No man also soweth a piece of new cloth on an old garment. Okay. We're going back to talking about uh, people who try to claim to be a Christian and they're trying to keep the old man. They want the new life, but they're keeping the old life. Okay. Else the new piece that filleth, filled it up taketh away from the old, and the rent is made worse. And no man putteth new wine into old bottles, else the new wine doth burst the bottles, and the wine is spilled, and the bottles will be marred. But the new wine must be put into new bottles. Okay? Um, Matthew chapter 23, verse 15, if you want to turn there real quick. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye compass sea and land to make one proselyte, and when he is made, ye make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. Two things. The old man has to die. Right? So many people attack repentance. They attack it. They want nothing to do with repentance, and they teach a repentless gospel. Okay? Why? Because they don't want the old man to die. Two, the second thing to get is it's made worse. Remember what we read over there in Mark chapter 2, verse 21? The rent is made worse. What does God think of these people that are making false converts? What do you think of a con false convert? A false convert is worse than a lost person, a professing lost person. 
And we know this, brothers and sisters in Christ, as we try to preach the gospel to the professing Christian world, uh, they don't want anything to do with the real Jesus Christ. It's harder to reach somebody who has this image of who they think Jesus Christ is and their gospel that allows them to keep their flesh and the old man, and it's hard to reach them. Okay? It's very hard to reach them. I'm going to go ahead and read real quick 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 21, what God thinks of a false convert. We already said that he's twofold more the child of, uh, what was that? Uh, you make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. People who know the truth, you know, servants of Satan, and they're purposely deceiving people. And then you have people that give in and say, I want that gospel because it lets, me, lets the old man live. I can keep my flesh as far as I can do whatever I want. I can still live in sin and sin and sin and call myself a Christian. Okay. Second Peter 2.21, what does God think of a false convert? For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. Remember what we're talking about. You're my friends, if you, if you do whatsoever I command you. Okay, the first commandment is the gospel. Okay? They've been told a false gospel, and they believe they're saved. It's better that they have not known the way of righteousness. Okay? Verse 22, But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb, the dog has turned to his own vomit again, and the sow that is washed in her wallowing in the mire. You can always tell a false convert when they first claim to get saved, you look at their life. We talked about that in the, in the previous study I just did recently. You're to prove yourself as a Christian. Okay? If your life is still that old life, the old man is still up kicking and, and walking around, uh, you didn't get saved. Okay? You cannot be born again until the old man dies. Turn to Romans chapter 8, 1. Okay? Old man has to die. First commandment that you're get, the world is given is the gospel. You're to obey the gospel. You're supposed to be obedient unto death. That's what we're talking about, the first obedience unto death. There's therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, the old man, but after the spirit, the new man. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. Remember we read, Jesus was obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Okay. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, evidence of salvation, the new man. That walking after the flesh is the old man, but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit the things that are of the spirit. For the carnal, to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Okay. The death it's talking about there is going to hell. Okay. The life it's talking about there is life and peace. We've been reconciled to God. We get to go to heaven now. Right? Because the carnal mind is enemy against God. You can't be an enemy of God and go to heaven. Just got to keep throwing that in there. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. The old man has to die. There's no getting around it. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. We talked about this in previous studies. There's two types of in the flesh. This physical flesh, as far as I have to put up with this body that tempts you, uh, this body of death, uh, not body of death, uh, um, oh, wretched man that I am, that Paul said, uh, we have to deal with this flesh until we get our new bodies. There's that type of in the flesh. But there's also in the flesh in the sense that you're walking after it. Your flesh is in charge. He's your commander. The old man is the one in charge. That's what this is talking about. Okay? But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, the capital S spirit. Okay? We walk after the spirit, not after the flesh. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you, 
Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. If the old man's still alive, you're not of Christ, and you're not in Christ Jesus. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwelleth in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his Spirit that dwelleth in you. Quickened, it means to make alive in a spiritual sense, right? To communicate a principle of grace too, okay? Ephesians 2.1 says, and you, and you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin, right? The new life. Jesus, will, God, when he saves you, will make you alive spiritually. You were spiritually dead before, and now you're spiritually alive. The old man has to die in order for you to have the new life and for God to um, spiritually uh, to how do I say this my brain is kind of freezing sometimes you're spiritually dead so he revives your spirit okay you're born again right? now if you go from walking after the flesh to walking after the spirit it goes from being a hundred percent about the flesh the old man to, to being a hundred percent about Jesus Christ so let's talk about the new man. Everybody knows Second um, <clears throat> uh, Corinthians chapter five verse fourteen. Okay, we're going to talk about the new creature, but I wanted to start back a little ways. So we're going to start at verse fourteen. For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for us all, then we then we're all dead. Okay, the old man is dead in trespasses and sin. Right? That's what it's talking about, what we read, that those who find their lives shall lose it. Okay? They don't realize that they're dead in trespasses and sin. That old man, he's not worth it. Verse 15, And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. As we said, the old man dies, the new man comes in. It goes from being 100% about yourself, the old man, to being 100% about Jesus Christ. Verse 16, Wherefore, henceforth, know we no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ... He is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Okay? Being obedient unto death at salvation means the old man, you obey the gospel. The old man dies. Okay? And God gives you a new life, new creature in Christ Jesus. John 14, 23. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. Okay? If a man, let's see. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. There's no greater love than this, that a man lay down his life for his friend. Jesus laid down his life. Okay? There's no greater love than that. Okay? We're supposed to be obedient unto death. That's what I'm trying to get across to the brothers and uh, for the false converts out there and to let you brothers and sisters in Christ know that that's what we went through. Okay? You know this. I know this. But it's opening our eyes a little bit more. The old man died being obedient unto death when it means to truly obey the gospel means that the old man dies. New man is resurrected. Okay? We are warned time and time again not to put on the old man. Okay, you get saved, brothers and sisters in Christ. You're obedient unto death. The old man dies, the new man. Okay, we're the new creatures in Christ Jesus. 100% um, about Jesus Christ, not about the old man, our flesh. Okay, we're no longer walking after the flesh, but we're walking after the spirit. So Ephesians 4.22 That you put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is the corrupt which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. I'm reading some verses where it warns us about not putting on, we're, put, uh, we're to keep the old man down. We're not to try to resurrect the old man. Colossians 3, 9, Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds. 
Okay, another warning. Romans 6, 1. What shall we say then? This is to the people that are trying to resurrect the old man, or the old man hasn't died. Okay. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Knowing ye, know ye not that so many of us, as were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death? The old man is dead. We're new creatures in Christ Jesus. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life, a new life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. That verse we read. And the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. I don't know why it just came to mind that the Lord's like, talking to the Lord's like, people who try to resurrect, those who are saved, you and me, that we struggle with the flesh and there's times we try to resurrect the old man, it's like we're giving CPR to a corpse. Let that sink in a little bit. The old man is dead, yet there's times we fall into temptation that we start to try to resurrect the old man. We put off the old man. And if you just get that in your head, maybe that'll help out a little bit. Just that thought of when as a truly Bible-believing, God-fearing man and woman that's born again, when you're trying to, you've obeyed unto death the gospel at salvation, and your life, we're going to start getting into the obeying unto death in the life of a Christian, now that you're saved. But it's almost like when you start falling back into trying to resurrect the old man, I just, that's just, get that picture in your head. You're trying to give CPR to a dead corpse. It's dead. You can bring it back to life. Okay. Um, living and dying for the Lord Jesus Christ, the life of a Christian now. Obedience unto death. Uh, Romans 14.5 okay. One man esteemeth one day above another, another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. He that regardeth that day regardeth unto the Lord. And he that regardeth not the day, to the Lord he doth not regard it. He that eateth, eateth to the Lord, for he giveth God thanks. And he that eateth not to the Lord, he eateth not, and giveth God thanks. Remember, the one day above another, that day is talking about the Sabbath day and holy days. Not man-made man -made holidays, if I can get the word out. Okay? But here's the important part. For none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. For whether we live... We live unto the Lord. And whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord's. Let that sink in. For to this end Christ both died and rose and revived, that he might be Lord both of the dead and the living. Okay, We're supposed to be obedient unto death. Before salvation and after salvation. Okay. So the question is, is Jesus your Lord only when you have to die for him? So many people say, well, I'll die for Jesus Christ. But is he your Lord as you're living for Jesus Christ? Okay. The whole point is, is your heart perfect? We talked about it in the past about having a perfect heart. Can a man be perfect before God? You can have a perfect heart before God. This body of flesh is still sinful and wicked. But your heart can be perfect for the, for the Lord. Your desire to obey this book, to obey God's commands. Okay? The life of a Christian. Uh, 2 Timothy 2.15, all scripture, let me grab it again. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. This book gives us the instruction in righteousness. It commands us on how we're supposed to live as a Christian. Remember what we talked about. You, my friends, if you do whatsoever I command you. If a man love me, he will keep my words. Your great love for Jesus Christ is that you died for him at salvation. The old man is dead and buried. You were obedient to death. Now in the life of a Christian, you're still, now you're to be obedient to death. 
your life as a Christian. Okay? You belong to Jesus Christ. Now, are we talking about sinless perfection? No. I mean, I can get into this hardcore. We can talk about things like abstain from all appearance of evil. We can talk about drunkenness. Um, you know, your body's a temple for the Holy Ghost. You're supposed to be sober. You're supposed to be vigilant. We can go through a lot of instruction and in righteousness. But you got to understand, your life as a Christian, Christian, you're supposed to do your best to be obedient unto death. Okay? And we're going to talk about what you do, okay, when you fail. But first, sinless perfection, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about that the new man has to be sinlessly perfect. Luke 9.23 and he said to them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Remember we talked about putting off the old man. We talked about the cross. Taking your cross up. Okay? You're going to drop your cross every once in a while, brothers and sisters of Christ. I'm not perfect. I'm going to sin. I'm going to make mistakes. That's not justification for it. I always have to throw that in, and I will always throw that in. That's not justification for sin. A lot of people use that. Oh, you're a sinner, we're a sinner, we're all sinners. It's going to happen. It's no big deal. It's still a big deal in the life of a Christian. It should still be a big deal to you. But we're all still going to sin. And when we sin, we need to repent. We need to forsake that sin. And we need to pick our cross back up and continue following Jesus and get back to where we left off. Okay? The life of a Christian, picking up that cross, being obedient unto death. The death that we'll talk about here in a second. 1 John 1.4 okay. And these things write we unto you that your joy may be full. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. Walk in darkness, the old man. Okay. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sins, the new life which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us in us. I wanted to throw this in there to say, hey, I'm not teaching sinless perfection after salvation. The obedience, as we're reading here, the obedience unto death in your life as a Christian is when you sin, you need to confess that sin. You need to repent, forsake, and get back to where you left off with the Lord Jesus Christ, walking for Him, living for Him. Mm -hmm. Now, the other thing is, is, okay, sinless perfection? No. Can you lose your salvation as a Christian? Okay. I'm not teaching that either. Okay. Ephesians 4.30. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. The old man is dead and buried. You are obedient unto death. The new man being born again, the Holy Spirit is in you. You are sealed unto the day of redemption. No matter how far you fall, if you're truly saved... You're not going to lose your salvation. You'll lose out and miss out on rewards in heaven. Your life will not be good as a Christian. You'll be, you'll be used of God as a bad example versus a good example. But you cannot lose your salvation. Romans chapter 8, verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? We talked about this. Uh, in your life as a Christian, obedience unto death could, in this life could actually mean a physical death. I'm not denying that. You might have to actually physically die for Jesus Christ in the gospel, okay, for the word of God. They definitely will be left and right in the time of Jacob's trouble. Verse 36, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. That's what we read at the beginning of this study. Okay? Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, I had to throw that in there for the life part, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, that neither death, we're going to end up dying, some people could die physically for Jesus Christ, nor life, your life as a Christian, you can fail and fall on your fall on your butt 
And it's still not going to separate you from the love of Jesus Christ. Nor height, nor debt. Next page. Nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Okay? Loved. Okay? Separates from the love of Jesus Christ. Before it said loved, uh, talking about salvation, we always think of salvation past tense. When it says the love of God, loved, when it's talking about past tense, it's talking about the cross. There it says, uh, separates from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. That's talking to Christians, the life of a Christian. God's love is on in your life, period, as a Christian, even when you fail him. Okay. Remember, he's faithful to forgive us. You need to strive, brothers and sisters in Christ, to be faithful to the Lord uh, in your life, to be obedient unto death. Whether you die of old age uh, or die physically because of being martyred or, you know, just die because you're in an accident because God says it's time for you to come home or to catch till the catching away of the body of Christ. You need to be obedient. You don't know what's going to happen if you're going to die before the time of Jacob's trouble or if the that time of Jacob's trouble is going to happen first. You need to be obedient unto death. Stand, stand, stand for the word of God. Obey the gospel like you did before you got saved and now that you need to do it as a Christian. Okay? Obeying the gospel as a Christian means that you have the new man, the new creature in Christ Jesus. You're walking after the Spirit. You're in Christ Jesus our Lord. So, John 15, 12. We're going back to John 15, 12, which we started this study with. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friend. Ye are my friends, if you do whatsoever I command you. Okay? Well, two things I want you to walk away from the study with, hopefully. Okay? Did you die for Jesus Christ? Okay, there's nothing wrong with you going over your life and say, okay, did I truly die for Jesus Christ? Did I follow the true gospel? Am I a new creature in Christ Jesus? The old man is dead and buried. Okay. And then the second thing I want you to walk away with is going back through doing your own studies on instruction and righteousness, evaluating your life, going through your home. I did a video recently. I found some wickedness in my home. God showed it to me. All right. Cleansing your life, sanctification. Your walk with the Lord, trying to keep it as strong as possible. Okay. When you fall, picking up that cross daily and following Jesus, denying yourself. Okay. Repentance. So, did you die for Jesus Christ? Are you being obedient in this life as a Christian? Are you being obedient unto death? Okay. A lot of people say out there, you'll see this here from the false converts, I was one of them, we're so hardcore, I'm a hardcore Christian, I'm willing to die for Jesus Christ. But I wasn't, but I didn't actually die for Jesus Christ. I never died for Jesus Christ and as a false professing Christian. Okay? But you ask these people, have you died for Christ? Next time someone you come across a false convert says, I'm willing to die for Jesus Christ, I'm willing to die for Jesus Christ, have you died for Jesus Christ? Are you being obedient to Jesus Christ unto death, which is truly living for Jesus Christ? Because people will say, when you ask them, are you living to, for Jesus Christ? Did you die for Jesus Christ? Now are you living for Jesus Christ? I pray, brothers and sisters in Christ, that you're living for Jesus Christ, and this has encouraged you. So grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all, and my love for you in Christ Jesus our Lord. See you in the next video.